Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Well, once again, it's that time of the month that we are coming up upon the new moon. And uh, next weekend, uh, let's see, today is April 5th, but next weekend is when we will start to approach those um, uh, nights where we start to get a few hours of astrophotography. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some targets for this month. And additionally, uh, I'm going to try this out and see how it goes. I'm going to make some recommendations for the southern hemisphere as well and help stretch this out because I know we have a number of uh, viewers that are in the southern hemisphere and particularly out of Australia. Before we get started though, I want to talk about this beautiful backdrop here and this is shot by a friend of ours. His name is Patrick. He's a friend of the channel. Shot with him on uh, a few occasions and this is a beautiful Milky Way arch. He shot this over Bryce Canyon in southern Utah and for those of you that uh, are looking for some beautiful dark sky you cannot knock the dark skies that we have in southern Utah combined with the beautiful landscape that you can find down there to do a, a you know absolutely gorgeous astro landscape photography so this is Patrick's image uh, thank you Patrick for letting me use it as the backdrop it's absolutely gorgeous and uh, if you're looking for a destination for some astro I'm telling you southern Utah is gorgeous dark skies combined with beautiful landscapes but let's go ahead and get started with this month and we're gonna start off on the the northern hemisphere first up we're gonna take a look at Bode's galaxy and uh, Bode's galaxy is right next to the cigar. So generally when you shoot them, you will end up photographing both. And you'll see that it's located just above Ursa Minor at this time of the year and below Ursa Major. Uh, also known as the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper for uh, those of us here in, in America. And then this here on uh, the blow up image that you're seeing this image comes from telescopius.com which is a website where you can punch in the details of what your setup is and it will show you an approximation of what the image will look like that you're capturing with your camera and lens setup and so Bode's and Cigar Galaxy are shown here if you were shooting at 500 millimeters with a crop sensor. These are both great. I love to get them. Um, and, and, you know, if you have a, a lens that will take you out to 600 millimeters or further, I absolutely encourage you to do so. But it's a great combination, easily locatable off of Ursa Major or the Big Dipper. Moving on, next target I want to tell you about is to the uh, south and that's going to be the Leo triplet just below the uh, rear quarters of Leo the constellation and in this particular one you're going to find M65, M66 and you're also going to find the Hamburger Nebula, uh, Hamburger Galaxy I apologize, uh, all located right next to each other. And Leo is a pretty easy constellation to be able to identify in the night sky. And I, I've always enjoyed capturing this one. And right now, it's in a good position, uh, sitting up at some pretty decent height. And it'll give you a number of hours to shoot on that through the night. Again, showing this to you through a 500 millimeter uh, setup. Next. Uh, Markarian's chain. Now, to locate Markarian's chain, you'll see that it's not very far off from Leo. And with this particular one, you're going to be shooting a cluster of galaxies. They will all be very small. Now, to uh, locate it, uh, NGC 4438 is located... Uh, in a nice center position amongst the Markarian's chain of galaxies. And moving this over here, 
you can shoot this anywhere from 250 to 600 millimeters. Again, going off of a crop sensor. That's how I like to refer to focal lengths. But um, the wider you go, the more galaxies you're going to pick up. However, there's going to be less of the platter shape showing with the galaxies the wider you go. As you push towards the 600 millimeter, you'll get more of that platter shape to show up with the galaxies, but you do start to crop out more of the galaxies that are there. And you'll notice just by looking at this image, there is a lot of stuff in this cluster. And so um, Markarian's chain is a great one to go after, and it's not far off from Leo. And, and if you get out there early on in the evening, you, get you can... the, the Leo triplet and then move over and grab Markarian's chain shortly after that. Uh, next one, we're gonna swing around to the north. Uh, at this time of the year, the M51 Whirlpool and the M101 Pinwheel Galaxy is situated in a good spot in the sky. It's up nice and high. It's on either side of the end of the handle of the Big Dipper or the end of Ursa Major. And with this one, again, I'm going to suggest 500 millimeters or longer for either one of these targets. And they're, uh, they're, they're pretty good. And the pinwheel is the larger of the targets. And with enough collected data, you can get the arms to show up fairly, fairly well for such a small target. And then the clash of the, the two galaxies within the Whirlpool M51, I've actually had a lot of luck with being able to pull some color out of that. Uh, I've been very happy with it. So these are both great targets, easily locatable just above and below the end of the handle to the Big Dipper or Ursa Major at this time of the year. Now, let's venture into some uncharted territories and head south into the southern hemisphere here. Uh, right now, you guys in the southern hemisphere, you have Scorpius up in the night sky and I, I'm really chomping at the bit to uh, to get a shot at Scorpius. I, I love going after some of the targets here here in my location, uh, 41 degrees north latitude. I don't get a real good shot at Scorpius, so I, I'm envious of you guys that are in the southern hemisphere. But to our first target, I see 4592. The uh, blue horse head, it is off of the end of the, uh, the constellation of Scorpius here. And with this one, it's a nice, large, blue gas cloud that's up there. And you can shoot this one with 200 millimeters and dial it in to get a little bit closer if you wanted to frame it up. Uh, however, because of distortion that you tend to get with the uh, edges on lenses, I prefer, you know, 200 millimeters that allows me to kind of crop and clean up the outside edges while capturing a nice fill the image of the blue horse head. Moving on from there, just right next door, we have the, I apologize, there we go. Uh, let's see here. We have Ro Ofiuki. And I know I'm probably saying that wrong. But anyway, uh, staying within the constellation of Scorpius, you have this beautiful color gas clouds that are right next to the blue horse head. Now, IC4603 is located there in the center of all those beautiful colored gases that are there. However, Antares being a nice large star, it's really easy to locate off of the constellation of Scorpius. So I highly recommend this one. And with this, if you decide, you can actually go wide with a 50 millimeter and capture both the blue horsehead nebula and you can capture Ro Ophiuchi all in one giant cluster of beautiful colors. Uh, and then from there, I mean, you can certainly shoot closer and closer to fill in the frame based on what you want. But uh, I think uh, 50 millimeters, if you've got nice dark skies that you can capture all those colors, just 
50 millimeters is beautiful for bringing all of those colors in. Now, uh, moving on from there, let's take a look at the uh, Car Nebula. The Car Nebula is NGC 3372. This one here, a uh, smaller target. It's one that uh, we don't see up here in the Northern Hemisphere. To the best of my knowledge, I don't believe we ever do. It looks to me as though it's, this one would definitely favor a astro-modified camera with the, uh, the hydrogen alpha gas that's in there. And then it is a nice large target, which you can shoot at 200 millimeters. I know this blow up image again, coming off of telescopius.com. You should check it out. Great website. Uh, it's really blown out. It's a terrible image coming off of there. But the point and purpose of using telescopius is just to give you an idea as to what your framing will end up uh, or, or what's what equipment you're going to want to do to frame this up the best you can. So there you have it. Those are the targets that I'm suggesting for both the northern and southern hemisphere. Again, I would love to say thank you to Patrick for letting me use this beautiful backdrop of the Milky Way Arch over Bryce Canyon in southern Utah. Amazing place to go and shoot. And uh, finally, we would love to see you over in our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR where there's uh, lots of like-minded and friendly people. And we can continue the conversation and share our images over there. And finally, if you like the, uh, the video and the content of what we're doing here at AstroVenture, I would love for you to like the video, share the video, and consider subscribing. Until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.